Hey, hey guys, it's Baban and I'm back with another tutorial and in this one I'm going to be showing you how to use the rulers in Clip Studio Paint. This is actually part of a tutorial that I've been doing for 1, 2 and 3 point perspective and I'll be putting that video as well as all of the PSD and everything for this on the Patreon. So what I've got here is my third example with 3 point and I've got my vanishing points and the radiating perspective lines that come out from them here as examples. And I'm gonna use those to teach you how these rulers work. Okay, so if we look down the tools menu here, around the bottom, it should be by default, is a little triangle here that's kind of pointing up this way. That is our ruler. If we look through the ruler menu here, we have something called a perspective ruler. Now we're going to want to click on that one. And I've made myself three little layers here for our three different bits of perspective that I'm going to be adding the rulers into. Now, before I do that, there is a little tick box in here that says create at the editing layer. Now, if I untick that and I try and start to put a ruler down like this, and you can see it makes a new layer down the bottom, which can be a little bit annoying because I would have to bring that all the way back up here. And that's not something I want. So the first thing I want to do is tick this because I have my layer ready. And of course that's optional, but I find it a lot easier to do that. Now, what you're going to get is a little crosshair like this. And what I want to do with the first line is go and put down where my horizon line is. So that is this white line that I have down here. And then at this point, you're still going to have the crosshairs. And from that, we're going to want to add in our vanishing points. So if I click it and hold down, it's going to give me this line from where I've clicked. So that is radiating out where I want it to go. So now we have ourselves a little ruler. And it's on the layer that I put it on initially as well. If I just change to my pen, you should be able to see that this now is going to clip and radiate out like this. It will also clip to a vertical and a horizontal like this if I draw in those directions. So that's giving me all three of those. Let's clear the layer. Now before we get into editing the ruler itself, I just want to cover a quick way to toggle on and off the ruler, which is to go into the layer menu and you should see next to these layers that there is a little ruler icon here and if I hold shift and then click on it you will get a little x over the top of the ruler and the ruler is then no longer on the layer anything I draw won't apply to it if I turn it back on then it will so I find that to be the easiest way rather than going through all of the object menu and moving the points around manually that we're going to look at in a second Another note that I want to make is there is something else to do with the rulers up in the top of the layer menu here and you might be able to see there's just a little drop down here and I have all my rulers set to only apply to the same layer so if I make another empty layer here you can see when I click onto it the ruler disappears so it's not applying to anything else but the layer I'm on. However if we go to this drop down we can have it show in all the layers in the same folder or only want to edit in the target. So that's only going to apply to the layer that it's on. So if I go to show in all the layers, then when I click off of it and onto this layer, then it's going to stay there. And that can be quite useful if you want it to maybe apply to both your lines and your coloring. So it's a bit easier to do details in that that need to stay within the perspective there. But I would be very aware of that if you're having the issue of not being able to get the ruler to only stay on the layer that it's on and maybe having to turn it off uh, with this shift button repeatedly because of that. Next we're going to go into some of the things we can do and move around with this ruler. So we're going to want to come up higher in the tool menu to operation up here which is just a little cube with a cursor on it. We're going to want to keep it on the first option down here 
in the menu, which is object. And then if we click on the ruler, then it brings up a lot of different points. So let's have a look at what those are. First of all, the biggest ones here, this with the directional arrows, the largest button, is just to move the whole thing around on its own, like so. Let's undo and put it back in place. Click again. We've got this one here next to it. We've got a little group of three. That allows me to move this little selection of operation tools around here. And then we've got this one down the bottom, which is very, very small to see, but it's almost like a little X inside a diamond. And what that does is turns off everything on this ruler. And you might be able to notice, actually, if I just move this slightly, you might be able to notice that these lines have changed from blue and purple to a green, apart from that bottom one. And if I start to go and draw on this, then nothing is snapping to the ruler now. So whenever you see those lines turn green, that means that your lines will not snap to them. Okay, put it back in place, back to operation and back onto it again. So that button turns off the entirety of the ruler, all of it. Now, if we go and look quickly through the rest of this, you might be able to see there are other diamond shapes. So here and here and here and here. Now in this one, there is a vertical line in the middle. So if I click that one, you can see the vertical line that it might snap to here gets taken off. So now it only snaps to the perspective that we've put down with those radiating lines and also the horizontal is still applying. But if I try and draw a vertical line, it's just you can see gonna snap to those. I can draw that as vertical as I like. And it's gonna just snap to those radiating ones. Okay, let's clear that out again. Back to object and click on it again. You can see now also, as I've turned this off, it's got a little slice through it. Let's turn that back on. And then again, it should snap to verticals now that it's turned back on. There we go. The next one down here, see the bottom line has turned purple. So that one is off. So we should not be able to get any horizontals now. It's just gonna snap to all of these, including the vertical. And then back again, we have one here and you can see this line then turns green. So it's not gonna snap. I forgot to turn, actually. I forgot to turn the horizontal back on, there we go. This will snap to horizontal and vertical. So with that, like you just saw when I accidentally had this bottom one turned off as well, turn that off, then I should be able to mix and match these as I want. So now with both of those other ones turned off, I can just draw my vertical lines. And like I said, you can check which ones are turned on just by the colors of them. The vertical and the ones that we put down with those angles here will turn green like so. And the bottom one will turn a bit of a darker purple. Let's put that back in place where it came from. The next points I want to look at, and I'm gonna turn that one back on as well, is that it might look a little bit busy around here. And that's because we have this angle here that is radiating out, but we also have another one so that it's a little bit easier to line your planes up like this. So say I'm trying to line it up with, I suppose the kind of box that I've got going on here. So I'm just lining it up with those pale blue lines. I could pull it up these ones as well, up that way and then a little bit further down. It can help to move these around as you're doing stuff and line it up with the specific boxes that you're trying to draw. And of course, these middle points inside of those, you can see, 
uh, will allow me to move those around. You can move them kind of at any point on these lines as well, so they're a little bit easier to keep out of the way. And on both of them, the one we mentioned before, this little diamond here, if I click that on either of them, you can see that turns them green and turns them off. So, like I mentioned, we won't be able to snap any of our lines to them. Let's turn all of them back on again, like so. Now, some of the other smaller points that we haven't been over yet are these two smallest ones that are just little blue dots, and we also have them on these lines here. So, if I start playing about with those, what they are going to do, if we have them on these points here, is to keep the angle that we have in place, but it's going to move this horizon line around with this being kept as the static point. So I can do it with this one as well and it's keeping the placement of those and just increasing or decreasing how strong that is and that can be quite useful if you have a vanishing point that is very far off the screen like this. We can just tweak that instead of having to zoom out and pull it around very far. So if you have something that's almost parallel, but very, very slightly off like this, make it a little bit easier to get that down for you, like so. Let's just bring that back in a little bit. Pull that back up to us. And then we also have it on the horizon line here. So what that allows us to do is tilt it and twist it around like this. So we've got the purple as the vertical and the blue as the horizontal. Apparently we can kind of shift them around as we want to, even twist it all the way around like this. Also, if you hold shift as you do this, then it will allow you to snap it to either vertical like this, a perfect diagonal like so, and perfectly horizontal again so we just get those degrees all the way around like so. Also if you hit the shift button and hold it down as you are drawing the ruler initially that will help you get it perfectly horizontal or vertical too or the diagonal. So I can either do it free like this without holding any buttons down or I can hold shift and get perfect 90, 45 degrees and all the way around as I need to. And lastly, these two buttons here, we can move the horizon line around like so. If you would rather move that around than tweaking this, these little um, shift buttons that I just mentioned. So we can move the entire thing around like this also if you would like to. For this next bit, I did a time-lapse on clip of me just blocking this out with my three different rulers so that you can see it in relation to all of them more zoomed out. And now we're gonna have a look at it actually in the clip file with all the rulers. Here's the clip file with all of these lines done, the little zoomed out view, and let's zoom in and just go over and look through these rulers. So I decided to split these up into the three layers. So I've got my first one here, the second one over here. See that one lines up there? And then this one that lines up with those yellow lines as well. Thanks for watching, I hope this helped. If it did, give us a like, share if you think it'll help someone else, and subscribe to new videos on Saturdays when I have them. If you would like access to these videos early and also to a bunch of exclusive ones, you can subscribe to the Patreon down in the description. There is also links to everywhere that I post stuff as well as where you can get prints of things that I've already drawn too. And my commission information if you want me to draw you something. Uh, yeah, tough for watching. Goodbye!